Hey everyone, this is Sarah from RhythmJuice.com. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to transform a basic piece of choreography into a highly musical masterpiece. Now while this content might be pretty advanced, it should be interesting for dancers of all levels who are interested in seeing the layers of musicality as well as the process we go through to create high quality stuff. The musicality clip comes from a course we have on Rhythm Juice. So in that course, we teach a basic Charleston combination, then we spice it up with some advanced embellishments to hit one song. But then we switch to a new song and try to figure out how to make that combo highly musical and hit the new song. Let's get started by watching a demo of the basic combination without any of the fancy embellishments. The next thing we did in the chorus was walk through a bunch of embellishment rounds to make it more and more fancy and advanced. So let's take a look at the basic round followed by the fancy round and see if we can tell the difference. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. Now that we have the basic and the fancy round, we switch the songs. The question on the table became, how can we make this piece of choreography be more musical to this new song? Mm, when, right, sir, when I get low, I get high. If you have a critical eye for musicality like us, and you notice we weren't quite hitting it as well as we could, comment with the word boom chaka below. And if you haven't really noticed a difference, don't worry at all. By the end of this next clip, you'll start to see the picture. All right, so let's jump into the main clip where we walk you through the changes and why. Also, if you stick around to the end of the video, we've included a bonus clip where we show you an improvisation based off of the moves and stylings so that you can see how the musicality affects the social dancing as well as the choreography. Welcome to the musicality round. So, we did this to a song, uh, When I Get Low, I Get High by Glenn Kreitzer, and we are watching the cool fancy version and noticing, trying to pick out all the points where we're like, ah, we're not hitting that, we're really attracted to that sound, but nothing's happening. So. Basically, I mean, I'll splice in a little demo to music and then we'll chime back in here. The idea is we are missing some key points. The big area, da di do do di ya da 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 do di ya da da do di ya da 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 do di you wah. heard something big there and I also noticed that when we did our year <laughs> wheel there wasn't really anything in the music it's like man that's not it's not awesome and I'm like oh, Godfather voice right now so um, bear with me sorry about that so the first major change we did was try to hit that thing over there using concepts that we were doing over here the the bit here where we had this sort of like flick and it was like, that was a cool mo, uh, a cool pose, and this was like a cool stop position. So when we got over here, we had that seven whap, and so we were like, ah, seven whap, we can hit our down moment, which was coming from, whoosh, so we're using some inspiration from that bit. Boom, whap. <laughs> And then we had this to hit. There was this part in the music that had this sort of like, wham. So we added that ball change in seven, eight, a two, whoosh, and we were like, oh, let's hit that pose up there. And we could have hit that pose, but <laughs> holding it, because we were gonna hold it for the beat, or the two beats that the music kind of had the silence in. We're not we decided, Yeah, <laughs> we decided like, oh man, that's a little tough. So we turned it into that pose. <laughs> 
So after that, you're going to hear this, boo, wah, but out near him. And then there was this, na, na, na. So we're like, na, 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 as we came down, because it was just a step. And I was like, how do I get into this rock across? Because basically I'm thinking, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, eight, or seven. Seven, eight. So I was trying to get back to the pattern. So we had seven, eight, a two, three, five. And I was like, ooh, right about now we got to switch. But my feet were like this, right? So I did this sort of switch kick. Same and then with followers? Because of that, I had this thing to fix because I wanted to get back to my right foot. So I threw in the a kickball The beautiful thing chain. about the switch kick, though, for the followers is that actually puts you for the rest of that variation that you would normally be doing footwork-wise. So what we have is, for the leads, we have this whole footwork change. So I threw in a kickball, and then I found that beauty. But then when we did this, it was like, wait, we're not hitting the ending at all. There's this like real slow motion pause thing. So we played with some ideas and found that. I really like the way that looked because it allowed for me to unwind slowly. And we're like, uh, how do I get this hand? So we had a lot of trouble getting that. And so what we ended up doing is just turning it into a pose where the follower's hand's on the chest. Because I love grabbing my mm -mm, That's what chest. I work out. And then I tried to work my way out of it and take the hand off of here on the moment where it becomes more available. So we spiced up the ending, and we were feeling pretty good about it, mm -hmm. and then we watched it to music, and we went... Oh, what? the beginning, dang it. Not quite as musical as we can make it. Especially, it looked, the beginning looked musical until we fixed the end and got sharp, and then the beginning started to look blurry and stand out as not sharp enough, not enough intention. So we heard these little sounds, the first major one was ya yeah, bop boom yeah. and we were like okay da 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 and of course like this has been done this position so we we're like how do we make that a little fancy so we did a little cutesy pose there <laughs> which we worked our way out of boom 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 ba doom boom ba ba <laughs> and then we heard this next moment which was there so we're like, ah, oh, we're just walking through that. And now we need to do this sort of like emphasis. So we chose to do a sweep there, especially emphasizing the step there. But Once we did that, it kind of put us on a different footwork configuration. So by doing that, we added this step, hop, step to fix the feet. And then we got back to that. That ended up spicing this up, and then we got back to boom, boom, wow, shake it, and all that stuff. So when it came together, we ended up with. And everything started to, to pop and to look a little bit nicer. So that was a very good example for us is like, right when you think it's good, when you make some sort of part shinier than the other's parts, it starts to not look shiny over here. And that's the, the polishing game, right? looks really shiny, you polish a spot and that spot gets shiny, everything else looks dull and you start, you know, working until everything's just kind of consistent. And this is a really big note that I, I give a lot in my coaching program for our more advanced students that are working on choreographies, is consistency of musicality. When you pick a level of shininess, mm -hmm. Keep then, you, yeah, keep <laughs> at it, right? Or if you polish one spot too bright, then it makes the rest of the routine stand out as not polished enough, right? So it's a little bit of a trick 
to give that consistency as opposed to bright spots here and there that make everything else look kind of dull. Uh, just a little bit of a pro tip, and I hope you guys have fun with your challenge if you go for it. We can't wait to see the results. So one thing I want to point out is that this works really well if you have a basic rhythmical flow of choreography. So if you have something already choreographed that's a little bit complicated, you might need to scale back to the basic form and then rebuild the musical layers from there. So now that you have a process to make things more musical, we want to hear from you. What do you do when you're trying to make things really musical? Do you have a process? And if so, what is it? So comment below with your ideas. As promised, here is the improvisation. So you might notice that the musicality isn't as on point with this improvisation, but the creativity and the impromptu decisions makes it a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Now, if you found this video useful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for all things swing dance. Also, if you wanna take the course, I will include the link below and you have a one month free trial to check it out. Are you ready? No? As we do in the basic version, variation okay. basic. Oh, I got it. Call it the basic version. version. The basic variation. The basic version of the basic variation? The basic. <laughs> In the basic version of this move. In the basic version yeah. of this move. Boom, chaka, boom, chaka. Make sure to do the.